So what should we make of all this? Let's bring in Andrew Lieb, employment attorney and business expert. Andrew, what's going on in Manhattan? You're in New York, the business capital of the world. Full-time offices, only 8% full. It's a mind-blowing chance that we have the entire city that never sleeps. It's now the entire city that's completely empty because all these office buildings that were designed to create what we call creative collisions. If you go back to when we saw Bell Labs realize that when people work together, they get more creative. No one wants to go back after COVID. And this is a major problem that's not just for the, each individual business, but all throughout the industry and the city itself from landlords everywhere but not long ago we kept hearing things have changed forever no company can force their people back full-time workers aren't going to do it three-day work weeks maximum did that pan out well i think your word force is interesting because you can force your employees to do anything but then they can quit and we have the great resignation where, as you're saying, many people want to go to work. It's not that they don't want the office space chance. It's that they don't want to go every day. There was actually a story of a mid-sized law firm in New York City that was offering $25,000 to their associates just to get them back into the office. Because, again, we know creativity is better, but people got really accustomed to working from home. Although I will say to you, as someone with a three-year-old, I really like the office space. It gives me a break. <laughs> no, I always tell my husband, I'm going to my vacation, which is work, and you can stay here with our two, two and a half year olds. Um, but the changes are still noticeable. There's this great sandwich spot around the block here, still closed after March 2020. Coffee place I love, one block away, shut down. It opened one month before the pandemic. I'd have to imagine commercial real estate companies are freaking out. Well, I think you just hit two different aspects of commercial real estate, and you're so right. First is the fact that we have all these vacant offices. Imagine, because I'm sure you know, many of these tenants aren't paying their rent, and that's a predicament. Mm. But I think you hit on a bigger issue that's not getting enough of a spotlight. These small mom-and-pop businesses that were supported by the workforce environment, whether it be the coffee shop, the donut shop, or otherwise, they're suffering the toll. But I will say to you, interestingly enough, on the flip side, you're seeing suburban areas more and more having these mom and pop shops because all the people that are staying home want to get access in the suburban areas. So it's made more of a change in location, although it's sad for the people that were in the city location to start with. That's fascinating because one of the dings why some of us didn't want to live in the suburbs in the past was it was too boring. You know, you go in one town, it's this way, the next town, it's the exact same way. Okay, very interesting. Um, let me ask you this. We have these giant spaces in downtown areas mostly that are now empty. Are they thinking about what to do with them? There's actually in New York a push by the governor, Governor Hochul, and also the mayor of the city to convert a lot of them into residential. We're seeing that as a good talking point. But I want to use the word talking point. Why? It's not like you could snap your fingers and an office building becomes residential. That's, first of all, a major cost. Second of all, you need to have a zoning change to even permit it to happen. So it's a great idea, but I'm thinking that we're going to have to see a lot of government intervention where they're making an easy path, an easy landing path to see it become residential. It's interesting, though, Chance, and I'll tell you why. Because the biggest problem in places like Manhattan is affordability of livability. And if they were to have an increase in residential space, perhaps it could become more affordable and ultimately solve that problem as well. Okay, one last question. You're an employment attorney. Can employees fight this if they say come back? Because you're bringing value. You've done the job well from your home office for the last two years. Any recourse when the RTO email rolls into the inbox? So from a legal perspective, they can start off by fighting it if they have a reason to stay home, whether it be a health reason or otherwise, which is called an accommodation. But as a legal matter, they really can't fight it unless there's a health reason for them to stay home on what's called that accommodation, unless unless the employer changed the rules in the policy manual. So you're going to want to read the policy manual and see what the rules are. But I think it's less of a legal issue and more of a functional issue. 
Because if your entire workforce wants to stay home and you force them to come in, they're going to quit, which is the problem. And right now, we still have an employee powerful moment. But I'm going to tell you something. We're seeing the tech companies already start to downsize a little with the stock market. And once there's not as many jobs going on, then everyone's going to get their tushy back into the office. Because when you lose the power as the employee, you'll see that it's time to stop up into line because you want to pay your mortgage. So I think that that's an issue. But chance another issue to bring up is all these work from home issues where people are having all sorts of discriminatory action by having naughty things on the Zoom and otherwise by accidents. I don't know if you've seen this, that people get so relaxed at home that all of a sudden I've spoke to employees where they go on a Zoom call with their staff and there's pornography on someone's Zoom. And this has become a major problem because people have blurred the lines between their personal life and their work life. And so one of the issues of being back in office is that we have a work decorum and people need to keep that work decorum even when it Got it. Business attire, let's relax that. But coming back to the office, I got to say, I've been back for a few years. It's, it's really not that bad. Andrew Lee, as always, thank you. Thank you, Chance.